So your name and what the Lord has done. <laughs> Good evening, Coiner. Yeah. My name no longer is my single, it's now plural. So our name is Mr. and Mrs. Shalom Dam. And today, it's a great honor for us to stand before God, before God's amazing people, and to share our testimony of how one became two. And truly, I want to say a big thank you to Apostle. He's truly a father because he was with me and with my wife all through the journey and even till today. A little bit of context into why I'm smiling a lot today. Yes. In this year of exceeding great rewards, God gave me mine in my first half of the year. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God actually prepared me for this beautiful woman here by bringing me into KSOM. So I'm an alumni from last year. And God literally trained us for everything he wanted to do. To give some context, we initially wanted to do the wedding here in Abuja. It's easier. We're both here. But God changed everything and he said, go to Lagos. How? My parents are not even in Lagos. Now I'm thinking of everything that was going to happen. I was just like, God, is this really your will? You know, I kept fighting back and forth with that word. But God had to use three different ways to tell us that that was where he was sending us to. He used dreams, he used her, and he used two other friends who did not even know I was trying to get married. They said they saw me in Lagos, in Canaan land. And that's what actually happened. So God took us to Canaan land for a reason. And when we went there, we saw God do miraculous things. But before that happened was the miracle of favor, the miracle of financial supply. I did not have all the money I was thinking I would need for this wedding. Of course, we know what has happened this year. And interestingly, everything kept changing as the preparation was going. It was like God was literally stretching our faith. Because when we were planning, we looked at different vendors. We're looking at, okay, different people that we can meet. All of a sudden, everything was two times, three times the price. But what God did for us, he gave us one venue that had everything together in one package. But before that happened, it was a season of crying and God, where do we get the money from? The months were going, the days were going. We didn't even have our house. So we're thinking we have to plan the house, we have to plan for the wedding and everything, priorities and all of that. But to cut the long story short, everything changed when one thing happened to both of us. We stopped thinking and calculating with our minds. God had to get us to the point where we said, God, at this point, we don't know how we're going to do it. But because you have said, if we take care of your business, you would take care of ours. We stopped working on the wedding. We started working on blessing people. And in blessing people, that's where the blessings came. And not only did we have our wedding on the 8th of June, 2024, but we had three different celebrations for what we did not prepare for. Everything we planned, we said, God, we want only 100 people. And the place where we had booked for was, you know, highest 140. We had over 240 people. We don't even know how it was paid for. And everything happened without any single debt. God cleared everything. When we came back to Abuja, when we came back to Abuja, interestingly, the house was not yet confirmed. We we're still going back and forth trying to look, okay, what's the best, God, what do we do? And we had to travel again. There was a place that came up and we said, God, if this place is for us, keep it for us because we needed to travel that same day. We traveled and came back and God kept that house. The landlord said he had received over 20 people that were coming and checking, but his spirit did not agree with any of them. But when we stepped in, he just smiled and said, these are the people I'm giving that house to. I'll leave you with this. He who finds a, ma a wife, <laughs> finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. For I am a man that has obtained favor. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, can we join the beautiful couple? and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Someone will come and testify just like this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please go ahead. Your name and what God has done. Um, praise the Lord. My name is Zainab Mohammed. I have been streaming on Koinonia from last year. Not until my, my colleague told me she served here. And I came on the 14th of April, 2024. Ever since then, God has been faithful. God has really been good in my life. Fast forward to May Miracle Service, 2024. I had an accident first week of June. And that night I had an accident. I had this, whenever I want to pray, I see these dark clouds and I fear a lot, like I can feel it and I can see it. It became very scary. So I came to church the next Sunday and I met one of the ministers and I told him what I was experiencing. And he prayed for me and told me it was the spirit of death. We prayed and I went home and it got to the point that people were telling me, were asking me what was wrong. I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't, I couldn't say anything at all. The only thing I did was to pray to God to save me from whatever spirit that was after me. I had a dream the following week. When I woke up from that dream, I didn't know where I was. I couldn't even explain how I was feeling. I couldn't even pray. I, I couldn't pray, but God was so merciful to me that I could see the following morning. I was hoping and praying that he will come through for me. Hold and behold, he came through for me. If someone else were to tell me this, I would say it's a lie. But I saw it and I felt it. My fear was beyond all fears. I couldn't explain it. So I am here to give all the glory and the honor to God Almighty. Because the very day I came to Koinoni and the very day I gave my life to Christ, and that day I converted. So I could only say thank you to God. Thank you to my colleague in the media department. And thank you to all the ministers that put me through prayers. Thank you, God, for Apostle Selman, for using him as a tool in our lives. I really want to say thank you to each and every one that has built my self-esteem seated here. Thank you so very much. Can we join our sister and celebrate God? This is someone who has been delivered from the plague of death. Hallelujah. I want us to truly listen to every testimony, not just as storytelling, but these are real life experiences that people have passed through and they have experienced the hand of God mightily. Please come. Your name and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. My name is Praise Raji, and I'm here to testify for what God has done in my life. I was diagnosed with fibroid four years ago. I was advised not to remove it surgically to avoid complications since I'm, I was very young. I was given drugs to take daily to help manage the situation, which I did. Six months into that, during one of my checkups with the doctor, the doctor said he wasn't pleased with the state of my womb and warned that if I continue with the drug, my womb might get damaged. I stopped and had to deal with the heavy bleeding, excruciating pain and weakness for four years. In March this year, I was listening to The Mystery of Deliverance, part two, and the Holy Spirit laid it in my hand to see the big daddy of this house. 
he prayed for me and said, go and return with a testimony. I went back home to Patakot, and in that same match, during the miracle service, a lady came to testify about how God had healed her of firebird, and I keyed into that testimony. During the service, Daddy prayed for people with firebird, and coincidentally, it was Resurrection Sunday, and he declared that we experienced the resurrection power of Jesus Christ upon our life, and I claimed it for myself. With so much faith that the word had taken effect in my life, I went to the hospital the next morning for another scan. People of God, it was empty. In the doctor's words, it doesn't look like anything went wrong here. I asked him just to be sure if my womb was okay, and he said, everything looks normal here. And that was the end of the bleeding, the pain and the weaknesses. Secondly, I want to thank God for making me go for my youth service after almost three years of delay because of missing results. God helped and they found the results without me having to do an extra year. And in April, I went for service. I was posted to Borno State and I booked my flight due to security reasons from Abuja to Borno. So I traveled from Pataka to Abuja by road Upon arrival at the park in Abuja, I booked a ride to take me home. When the ride arrived, I checked the plate number at the front of the car just to confirm that it was my ride. It didn't occur to me to check the plate number at the back. Just when I was about to enter, an old man from afar screamed at me, telling me not to enter the car, and I was shocked. He came closer and confronted the driver, asking him why he had no plate number at the back. He stuttered and surprisingly zoomed off. I was still startled by everything that had happened and the old man explained that a young lady had been kidnapped in that manner the previous week and she had not been found up till that moment. I want to thank God for God's mercy and for using that man to save me. I want to thank God for God's grace upon my life. Thank you. Can we join our sister and celebrate Jesus? My God, that is deliverance. And this is another testimony of God delivering people from fibroids. What this means is whatever has not been planted by the Father that is in your life is uprooted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your name and what the Lord has done. Hallelujah, Kononia. I am Idoge Gati I'm from Delta State. And by the grace of God, uh, I've been following and been a member of Koinonia for about 10 years. I want to testify of what the Lord has done for me. I am a product of the graces upon this house. I am a living testimony that God answers prayers. Firstly, by the grace of God, I got married to my beloved wife in December 2022. And in January 2003, during the first Koinonia service, which was a Fata, the mystery of open doors. After that service, I was at home online. The Spirit of God told me, pray this prayer for seven days at midnight and I started praying before the end of that week I got a call from my headquarters and they said it's okay we are nominating you for a position because of your integrity and because of your accountability and I was surprised because I didn't know what it was a few days later the appointment came out and I found myself I was given an appointment that I was not yet qualified for and then I resumed in Port Harcourt. I resumed in Port Harcourt. If I, before I even resumed, they were already contesting that appointment that you are not due for it. But to God be the glory, they had no choice. I went for it. That same year, in June, while my wife was heavy, she was pregnant to the glory of God, I was offshore because I work in the maritime sector. On the 1st of June, I had prayed with my wife and I was going out for work. And then towards evening, about a few hours, she called me and said ah, that she's feeling some pains around uh, pelvic region. And she's a medical doctor. She says she needs to go to the hospital. And it was me on the Atlantic Ocean on my way for my operation. So then I reached out to a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine. I said, please, my wife is in, is in my house in Oné. And uh, she needed to go to the hospital. She didn't have any, so she got a recommendation. So my, my friend took my wife to the hospital. They got there by 11 p.m. at night. 
So they did a scan and they said she would need a cyclage. So she got to this hospital and requested for their gynecologist to conduct this operation. Gynecologist was nowhere to be found. They said he was coming. He was coming from 11 p.m. to the morning. She was in severe pains. She was in severe pains. I was just calling while I was at work at sea. And then when it was 11 a.m. on the 2nd of June, uh, her friend of mine, a friend of hers who was with her told her that called me and said, the baby came out. And the first question I asked her was, how is my wife? And then she said, she's fine. I said, glory be to God. Then immediately, while I was at sea, I had to call my boss and said, I am not in the right frame of mind. My wife's in the hospital. I need to return back. And I was permitted to. I go back that night, went straight to meet her. My mother-in-law was already with her in the, hosp uh, uh, in the hotel. And then following day, we went home. And I prayed because after my wedding in December, the Lord told me, before my first anniversary, I will have a child. And I head on to that word. So when I prayed, the following day, I woke up with a song that all the enemy, what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord has turned it around. And then I went to my wife. I said, relax. God is in control. Shortly after that, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, we should write our prayer point. I told my wife, write your prayer point three. I wrote three of mine. And then... That was the period where our Father and the Lord brought up the song, uh, the prophetic song, Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon our life. And then I told my wife, we're going to pray this prophetic song onto this prayer point. And in Port Harcourt then, uh, where I was staying, Estate was a safe place. We came out at midnight for our prayer walk for seven days, praying on our prayer point. Obviously, it was for our baby to come back. It was for the fruit of the womb. Shortly after that, my wife received the revelation where the Lord gave her an EDD. She wasn't pregnant then, but the Lord gave her an EDD. And times upon times, I had revelations, and then we trusted in God. Fast forward to this year. She was to put to bed at the estimated time the doctor gave to us, and the Lord blessed her with the consultant that she was seeing every two weeks. So it was close to delivery. I also take permission for me to come home so I can be with her when she's going for delivery. But then she said I should wait. To cut a long story short, uh, she went to see the doctor on this faithful Friday, and then the doctor said, your blood pressure is very high. The edema is coming up, the swells, I mean. And then they're like, we need to conduct an emergency operation. I was like, what? They did the operation, the doctor opened that up, brought the baby out, they had to take this baby to a NICU, uh, intensive care unit. And the baby was there for three days. To cut the very long story short on this phase, my wife reminded me and said, babe, this was the exact EDD the Lord gave to me. Even though the child was 34 weeks, but that was the day the Lord said that boy was going to come out. To the glory of God, I have a wonderful son. Hallelujah. <laughs> secondly, secondly, in December that same 2003, the Lord told me I should listen to all communion messages from January to that, to that month. And I should pray that Ephata I did again. And from January this year to this point in time, it has been from glory to glory, from elevations to elevation, to the glory of God. I must confess that indeed, God answers prayers. Thank you, Queen. Hallelujah. Can we join him and celebrate the faithfulness of God? Hallelujah. God is faithful. He watches over his word to perform it. I want us to bow our heads in a few seconds. And thank God, acknowledge him as the doer of every single one of these testimonies we have heard tonight. It takes the power of God to turn speakings into reality. Let's thank him. And while you're thanking him, I hope that while you listen to the testimonies, you also receive strategies to bring you out of your own situations. For some of you, you have come to the place where the light needed for that dark situation is available it says they are life to they that find them you may have come with a life and death situation so threatening find hope you have come to the right place you can just say Lord I open myself tonight I know that my change has come 